Over the last couple of years, we've seen this increasing push towards more sustainability with our tech products. And one of the easiest, simplest ways to be more sustainable is to just be able to keep your phone for longer. A big part of that's going to be actually having updates arriving on your phone for longer. If you buy a phone and it only gets updates for two or three years, you may be pushed to move towards a newer device that's going to be continuing to get system updates. Now, this is one of those things that typically you can only get by buying a new device. These newer devices that have five years or even seven years of promised updates. Unless, of course, you are using a Pixel phone, a Pixel 6, 7, or Pixel Fold, because Google has just done something very, very surprising, and I would say unusual. They have retroactively extended the life of these devices by guaranteeing two additional years of system updates. If you are using a Pixel 6, you would be at the end of your update life, but now instead you have two more years. Pixel Fold users, who only a couple of years ago might have dropped $1,800, you too now have two additional years of updates. And I think this is one of these news stories that's going to fly under the radar a little bit, but I actually think it's a pretty big deal and it's worth talking about a bit deeper. I think it's worth asking, how is Google doing this? What is allowing them to extend the updates on these older devices, but also with the Pixel 8 and Pixel 9 devices, what's allowing them to promise seven years of system updates because it's one of those things that I think a lot of people are just going to think, well, they can just update their phones as long as they want to, right? But it's not quite that simple because it comes down to the SOC, the system on a chip. And this, I think, is a big part of why Google has pushed to developing their own processor with Tensor. It's not just as simple as OEM has phone, OEM makes update for phone, and then they send the update to the phone. The actual processor that the phone runs on also has to be updated with a current Linux kernel in order to be certified to get those updates. This is a big reason why companies go with bigger manufacturers like Qualcomm and MediaTek because they do tend to do a better job of this. But if Qualcomm only wants to continue updating this kernel for their processor for three years, it's going to be very, very hard for that vendor using that processor to continue updating the phone in a significant way. Unless, of course, you're Samsung. They've somehow managed to get Qualcomm on board to update their phones for seven years. I don't know this for a fact, but I would guess that there's probably some money changing hands there to get that type of thing to happen. It's not an easy thing to do. When you make your own processor, that ball is completely in your core. You can do whatever you want to do, and that's where Google is with Tensor and with their Pixel devices. At least that's my understanding of the situation. If I got a detail wrong, I'm sure one of you out there will have the answer and you can provide a comment for some context down below. But again, from my Googling and looking around, that is what it seems like the situation is to me. I would honestly love a peek behind the curtain on this one because when you look at the Pixel 6, the Pixel 7, and of course my favorite, uh, the Pixel Fold, these phones have been out for a while. They were promised the updates that they were promised, and I think that generally speaking, everyone had just sort of accepted that and moved on. There was no great pressure on Google to change this, and in fact, they didn't even make a big deal about it. They just sort of updated their support page and just said they're going to get five years from the time that they came out. They didn't put out some you know, big press release or brag about it or pat themselves on the back. They just kind of rolled out the change to the support page and moved on. I would love to know what has caused them to make this decision. Is it just that they've determined that delivering these updates is going to be relatively easy for them to pull off? I really don't know exactly what's going on there, but I do think that it's very interesting. And of course, it's great for consumers. And if you're a consumer like me, who absolutely loves when a system update comes out, you love digging into the change log and looking for the changes and the hints about things to come, I think that this, added with some other factors, makes Pixel phones absolutely far and away the best phone for people like me to use. 
when Android 15 comes out, who do you think is getting that update first? Well, duh, of course. It's going to be Pixel devices when QPR1, the quarterly platform release with new features, comes out. Who gets that? Duh, it's Pixel devices. Pixel feature drops. It seems like Google is constantly rolling out new stuff for Pixel devices. And look, it's not always huge, like, landmark crazy new things, but it is still this trickle of new features that seems like it's always happening. You never go more than a few weeks between somewhat substantial updates on Pixel phones, and you can go all the way back to a Pixel 6 now, and it's going to get two more years of that, despite the fact that we are a little ways into the Pixel 9's life cycle, and that is something that it's going to be very hard for other vendors to compete with, but I think that they're going to have to try to compete with it because it's going to start becoming the standard. Apple doesn't promise updates for as long, but they almost always over deliver. They've been doing this for quite a while, and it's a very good thing for iPhone users. Samsung is on board with seven years of updates now. Chip makers like MediaTek and Qualcomm are going to really start to feel this pressure from smaller OEMs who are going to say to them, look, you're going to have to start doing these updates to your processors for longer so that we can at least get to five years of updates to compete with these other vendors. I do hope that this becomes just the standard that the days of two and three years of software updates is something that is left way back in the past and left only to low-end budget devices. Phones have gotten so expensive. I am very happy to see Google and Samsung leading the charge in this way and pushing those update timelines so much further. It's also worth pointing out this article on AndroidAuthority.com by Gesu Michelle Rahman, where they're talking about something called Google's GRF project. It stands for Google Requirements Freeze. And without getting too deep into the weeds, basically what this means is that Google is going to allow freezing of its vendor software requirements so that OEMs could now ship Android OS updates with the original vendor software that the chipset was built for. Essentially, Michelle writes, OEMs could reuse the chipset vendor software across multiple versions of Android and still receive certification from Google. So they're not necessarily reliant upon Qualcomm, MediaTek, et cetera, et cetera, doing this kernel update, updating the stuff specifically for their processors so they could build their update on top of that. They can reuse what's there for three years. Now, like Michelle says here, GRF is an immensely complicated subject, which is why I'm not going to go any deeper into it because I've probably already said something that's wrong and I will only continue to say more wrong things. I will put a link to this article in the description down below. But I also do want to point out that he talks about that, you know, Google doesn't want to enable seven years of Android version updates, and that's just not what you're going to get with this GRF program, but it is a step in the right direction. And he does mention that if you want to go further than that, the OEM is going to need to basically work something out with the chipset vendor, which is probably going to involve money or uh, the colossal engineering effort of updating the vendor software themselves. So it does get difficult. But again, this GRF program is a step in the right direction, and I think that as more OEMs sort of push things out and there is more of a consumer push for longer updates, this will only move forward. At any rate, guys, those are my thoughts on Google extending the update window for some of their devices. I'd love to hear what you think about this in the comments down below. Subscribe for more content like this, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.